morning. May it please the Court. Robert Coulter, Assistant Public Defender, appearing on behalf of the appellant. I'd like to reserve two minutes for rebuttal. The defendant in this case was convicted of a second-degree murder as a result of a fight in a hallway in a high school. The state's theory of prosecution in this case was that the homicide in this case was the result of anger and jealousy and not the result of fear. Therefore, it wasn't self-defense. In order to establish this defense, the, this, this theory, the prosecution made a feature of this trial. Other than the six seconds when the actual homicide took place, the biggest issue in this trial was what happened three days when school started where the de defendant's girlfriend was giving rides home to the victim. The state's theory was that the, the defendant- defense, The defense was self-defense? Correct. That and the state's theory was that the defendant told his girlfriend to stop giving rides home to the victim and because- There's no question that what he was angry about, if he was angry, which he obviously was, was that she had, she had given him a ride home. He was not angry about the fact that she was not giving him a ride home any longer. So the only issue, there was no issue about why, or there was no pertinent issue as to why she had stopped giving him rides home. Well, that's not what the state's position was. That's, that's what the facts are. That, I respectfully disagree. That's not what the facts are. The, the, opening theory, was, the theory was he was jealous. The facts in the he, opening he statement. He was jealous because she gave him a ride home. She did give him a ride home. But, but, but at, the time, the fact, at, the, at the time of the event, she had ceased doing so. So what difference did it make why she ceased because other than other than hut other than one witness's testimony that the defendant told the defendant's girlfriend to stop giving rides home because there was jealous there was no evidence of that the no evidence of what there was no evidence that was the there evidence was that upset. she that she gave him rides home yes and there was evidence that she stopped giving him rides home yeah the state's theory was that the defendant was jealous why what, was it how do we know what difference does he was jealous because she was giving him rides home she wasn't he wasn't jealous because the, he wasn't the only way we know that is based on the testimony that the ride stopped if the jury would have heard didn't didn't the best friend testify correct that? the best friend and i think if we look at what so, the, i mean there's that right if well, we look at what which is competent evidence, right? There's no question that's competent evidence. What then the girlfriend to... testified, no, there was no jealousy whatsoever. The, 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 right. and then the defendant was not jealous of so, The best friend said, never saw him act jealous. No, never so happened. What we have in this case is a situation where the best friend testifies, the ride stopped, and then the prosecution is allowed to ask because it was important. Why did the ride stop? Because the defendant was jealous. The girlfriend testifies, did the ride stop? Yes. Why did the ride stop? Don't answer that. We don't want anyone to know why the ride stopped. So now we're s stuck in a situation where well, the jury is asked to believe. Do we believe the, the boyfriend, the defendant's friend, or do we believe the girlfriend? But why is it relevant as to why the ride stopped? Because from the beginning to the end, from the opening now statement. Uh, the, 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 question the, was, opening statement. the question was, under the facts of this case. Why is it relevant? Yes. Because an opening statement. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, the ride stopped the, the, because I'm a, the I'm asking you, I'm asking you not what happened in the trial, who tried what. As a matter of fact and logic. Okay, why, why, why is it relevant? Yes. We have two cases in this case. We have one case. We look in a, in a hallway, we see a fight for five seconds. We see a fight, defendant says someone put a hand behind my neck and there's a homicide. Oh, and, well, what, and what? If, if I uh, have a chance if, on the If someone put a hand behind his neck, then he, perhaps it was self-defense. The, the hand behind his neck had nothing to do with who gave what ride home to whom. That which is exactly, if you let me finish, that's exactly the point. The state was not willing to accept what happened at the, just at the school. The state from the beginning to the end, over and over again. Was he angry or was he scared? Was he angry or was he scared? How did they prove he was angry? They proved he was angry because he told his girlfriend to stop giving rides to the girlfriend. No, That's what they no, argued they, from they the beginning. No, they proved he was angry because his girlfriend gave 
this victim. That's not the record, and that's not what the state argued. The state argued that the way, the way we know that he's angry is because he told him Mr. to stop giving the rights, not to give the rights. Let's say he was giving the rides and he didn't care. Well, let's still, say it the reality I, of this case. I, I realize that the life of the law has not been logic, but your argument is not logic well, either. Let's say the jury had heard this fact instead. The girlfriend would have testified that I stopped giving the victim the rides home. Why did you stop giving the victim the ride home? Because I saw him have a fight with somebody else. And when I approached him, I told him, you shouldn't fight, and he told me it's none of my business. If the jury would have heard that, the entire state argument changes in this case. From the beginning to the end, as much as the court says it wasn't, that's what it was. From the beginning to the end, the state argued, we know he was jealous because uh, uh, he told that. Did any of this have anything to do with what happened when, uh, the, vic the, when the victim was stabbed? Yes, according to the state, that's their case. The state no, I, asked, I didn't again. ask what the, the state said. I said, did any of this logically have anything to do with who stabbed who, when, and why? Yes. The state takes the position that in order to <laughs> convict the defendant of second-degree murder, Mr. you have to find he was angry. That's the state's argument. How did they prove he was angry? And you're sticking with it. And you're with sticking with it. What, what, we, what we would condone in this case is a trial that says the state can come up and make a theory of a case that our case is based solely on the fact that the defendant stopped rides and let everybody know that's not what happened. What happened instead is the ride stopped because of something totally unrelated. If we would say that this was a fair trial when the state in closing... Okay, but the, the girlfriend was allowed to testify and did testify. Look, th this whole jealousy stuff didn't exist. Exactly. It, you know, the idea that the defendant was jealous of me, that wasn't true. So and I mean, that, she was you know, not... That, you, I said it the best friend. On the other hand, never. putting in evidence of the bad act of the kid who was killed does kind of divert the attention, and that could be and prejudicial. So, so made, we're looking at an abuse of discretion standard for admitting evidence. The state made a conscious decision in this case. They knew ahead of time, when they filed a motion in limine, that the real reason why the defendant's girlfriend stopped giving rides was a reason that they didn't want the jury to hear. That's why they filed the motion in limine ahead of time. So judge well, says, bad what? acts. I mean, it, it normally completely, totally inadmissible. No question I mean, when have you ever gotten a bad Just act? Just like in any that's case, like, there's no question. That's why the defense often files a motion in limine to preclude bad acts. Exactly right. Of the, yes, yes. And, then when and, the and it, it's always a discretionary issue as to whether the, bad, the evidence of the bad acts or the relevance outweighs or does not outweigh the, the, uh, looks, the prejudicial effect of the bad act per se. If the court looks, if we can look at the cases when the defendant opens the door, defendants always file a motion in limine. I don't want any of my prior bad acts to come in. The defendant takes the witness stand and says, I'm a nice guy. You've now created the issue. I'd like to see the case where the court says, well, that doesn't come in. The door gets opened when either party creates an issue in the case. And there is no way that anybody can read We're this. We're talking about the victim in the case. He's dead. We're talking about the reason for the state of Florida to be able to create a motive in a case and prevent the individual Mr. who allegedly Mr. is involved Carter, in the motive the motivation is jealousy. Exactly. The position is jealousy. It je why, is the question, it, wh why was he jealous? Why was he jealous? If, the defendant's position is he was not jealous. This okay. issue, no. the defendant's position was he, he was not jealous. But there is evidence that he was jealous. If so, what is the reason for his jealousy? Right, exactly right. There is evidence that he's jealous. There is evidence from the state. What, what is the reason? What trials do sir, we have? Sir, Mr. Calter, you know, enough. Mr. I'm, Calter, I'm attempting Mr. to ask Calter, your questions. Mr. Calter, what is the reason for the jealousy? The reason our position is there was no jealousy. What this case was is the state goes to the defendant's there was, friend, did if the there was a, Mr. Mr. Calter, Calter, you got to stop talking when someone asks Mr. a question. Mr. Calter, if he was jealous as to which there was evidence, why was he jealous? Our position is he was not jealous. The fact that but the Mr. state... But Mr. Calter, his boyfriend, her, his best friend, 
even testified. Yeah, his best his friend, best friend said, listen, when the, when the defendant went back to the girlfriend, he didn't want the girlfriend to take to take the victim to school anymore. And it anymore. was that testimony that we had every right to refute. That's what this trial is about. You're, you're saying friend, that the state's theory of jealousy opened the door to the girlfriend testifying, yeah, I did stop giving rides to the kid and who was killed. The and the reason I did is because I was scared of the kid or something like that. Let I mean, me, the kid had gotten in Let me try one last time and I'll sit down. The but, jury's in the jury room. We, we really know. Uh, we really the know. The jury's in the jury room and the jury says to themselves, we have to either <laughs> believe the defendant's friend or we have to believe his girlfriend. The defendant's friend says that the ride stopped and he's allowed to say why the ride stopped because he was jealous. The defendant's girlfriend says the rides never stopped because he was jealous. Do, you, do we really believe that the jury didn't want to know from the defendant's girlfriend? Well, if you're saying the rides didn't stop because he was jealous, why did they stop? And because she's not allowed to say why they did, didn't stop, the prosecutor in closing argument gets up and says, don't believe the girlfriend. She's a liar. That's what she says. And when they're asked to make the determination that she's a liar, they get two of the three questions. One, they get, did the ride stop? Yes. Did the defendant tell you to stop the rides? No. There is nobody that was deliberating in this case that didn't want to know the last question. Well, if you're saying it wasn't the defendant, what was it? And the prosecutor then gets up and close and says, this girl's a liar. Don't believe her. We recognize there was evidence from the defendant's friend, but in a trial, we had the right to refute it. The case didn't end after the first witness. And when the court looks at the closing argument, it's over and over again. It wasn't done out of fear. It was done out of anger. The issue of anger was not properly litigated, and we're entitled to a new trial. Thank you. Mr. Coulter, you went way over time, but we'll still give you a minute for rebuttal. Excuse me? We'll still give you a minute for rebuttal. Thank you. May it please the court, Linda Katz of the Attorney General's Office, here on behalf of the state of Florida. The state would like to point out that there was evidence of the defendant's jealousy separate and apart from anything having to do with the girlfriend. The defendant... Of course, but they're trying to rebut that. Yes. They're saying the state's uh, arguing and presenting evidence that um, the defendant was jealous. Of course, there's evidence that the defendant wasn't jealous. The girlfriend testified, hey, he wasn't jealous or possessive at all. Right. And they're trying to bolster that theory. So the, they want to put in, well, why would the, did the ride stop? At and, that point, silence. Right. And it really doesn't matter what her reason was for the ride stopping. She got to say, I never discussed my giving rides to the defend to the victim with the defendant therefore the defendant never asked me to stop giving rides so you already know if you're the jury that according to this girlfriend the defendant her boyfriend never exerted any influence over her to stop giving rides therefore the conclusion is she stopped giving rides but the jury also knows that this but but if so she was plausible. able to explain, but apparently she was not able to explain why she stopped giving rides. And, and you know, the human experience and human condition probably would be want to know. However, She's, you know, the rules did of she evidence, stop giving rides because she was afraid of the defendant? The rules of evidence. No, she stopped giving rides because she was afraid of the kid who was killed. The rules of evidence, though, clearly make it inadmissible to provide her reason because it is, in fact, an impermissible character attack on the victim who's deceased. If it was just between revealing something about the defendant, revealing something about herself, but in this case, she's able to impugn the character of the victim in disregard of the rules that say you can only bring in this type of evidence if it's an element of the offense, or if you, know, you have a reason here, as in self-defense, it could have been raised if it was raised properly. But then we go to the form of the evidence, its reputation. She's trying to bring in something that's a specific act. So the defendant fails in its approach. It's not the organic reason that they're trying to 
assert their self-defense and support it. It's the way in which they're trying to do it that's just not permissible by the rules of evidence. As we were saying, it's an abuse of discretion standard. The judge said this is not the proper way to do this. However, it's harmless. It's harmless because it would not have affected the verdict. We still have, as the court recognized, the girlfriend saying he wasn't jealous, even his friend saying he wasn't jealous. However, there is the fact that the defendant in his own statement lied, said, I don't have a girlfriend. Lo and behold, later he says, I do have a girlfriend. And as opposed to the girlfriend's lie that they got back weeks after, they got back together on a very significant date. They got back together on the third day of school, which is the same day that the ride stopped, which is what the defendant's best friend testified to. If the defendant was going to be back together with his girlfriend, there would be no more rides. So we have the balance for the jury. And the, defense, the defense is not that the victim deserved to be killed because he was playing around with her, with his uh, girlfriend. The defense is self-defense. And what, is, what does that have to do with the, with the actions of the victim in allegedly attacking the defendant? <coughs> at the time and place of the event. And in terms of the self-defense, there was no evidence of any kind of significant bruising or injury to the defendant. Photos were submitted, and photos clearly How did not How many times convince. was he stabbed? He was stabbed five times, and he was unarmed. And Well, but the video, although I must admit, it's very difficult to see anything about the fight itself. There are a few frames uh, that show that it was a fairly violent confrontation. The victim mm. was mm. killed by a s stab right through his heart and a knife wound right through his heart. Well, and a lucky or an unlucky. Yes. Well, the, the defendant also gave a statement on videotape. Was there any the evidence of any antagonism by the victim? that the victim had anything against the defendant? Other than the fact that they had, according to the defendant, a similar brief account uh, encounter the prior day in the hallway, a similar bumping into each other, and it was the defendant who said to the victim, be careful, whether that was a goading, whether that now, was... Now, there's a question of who bumped whom in the hallway. It had happened once before, and... You know, there's a question about who was who was the aggressor in the first place in this um, interaction between the two of them. And there were four eyewitnesses, and according to I believe two, they thought maybe it was the a mutual bumping, and maybe it was it was Alejandro Morjan, who was a defendant's friend. Um, actually, he just said that the uh, victim threw the first punch. He was distracted. He didn't see the uh, initiation of the encounter. Um, it was Yoselin Ramos who thought the defendant bumped into the victim. Michael Zayas didn't see how it started. And Silveste didn't, I don't see testimony as to that. But let's assume, according to the defendant, they bumped into each other. He didn't say one bumped. They said they just bumped into each other. And then you had, according to the eyewitnesses, a struggle. The victim was on the floor. It seemed as if the defendant was surely in the superior position over the unarmed victim. And we all know the result of that encounter. The defendant fled the scene, consciousness of guilt. And the defendant's video was shown to the jury, and they viewed his demeanor about this whole encounter. And according to the jury's finding, the self-defense really was not plausible after they viewed the videotape of the encounter, heard all the testimony, and saw the defendant's video statement. The state would maintain that there is sufficient evidence for this court to affirm the judgment and sentence and would rely on its brief as to the second issue. Thank, Thank you. you, counsel. Mr. Coulter, one minute. The state says that 
we went about it the wrong way because it was inadmissible character evidence. Opening the door allows inadmissible character evidence. That's the theory of opening the door. There was no other way to do it. Also, if the court looks at page 1069, which was the state's first closing argument, and 2078, the state's second closing argument, the state's theory of how we proved this was a second degree murder and not self-defense was there was no coincidence why these rides stopped. We all know why these rides stopped, except the only people who didn't know why these rides stopped was the jury, because the prosecutor kept, wasn't talking about the fact that we think he was jealous about the ride. The prosecutor was focused in on why the rides stopped. And the reason the ride stopped, according to the defendant's girlfriend, had nothing to do with this defendant. So how could this jury have made a fair determination of this case when a big piece of the pie was missing? The defendant, the state opened the door to this. Once they opened the door to this, they made it the crucial issue in the case. Why did these rides stop? According to the state, they stopped because the defendant was jealous. Because he was jealous, we proved to you he was angry. Therefore, it wasn't in self-defense. We had the right on the other side to say these rides stopped because of nothing we did. And when you look at the video, according to one of the state's witnesses, the victim threw the first punch. The state doesn't include and, that. And in conclusion. And in conclusion, this case fundamentally was unfair. The state opened the door. And we you would like for us to? To reverse this case for a new trial. Thank you. At this point